Thank you for joining us on Nationwide. I'm Ruth Aguela. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has made a global commitment that Nigeria's ongoing reforms are in solidarity with other nations to revive and strengthen multilateral cooperation. Sally Huguanara reports that the president was represented by the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, um, where he was a delegate at a high level forum on a multi-stakeholders partnership and the second Indonesia Africa Forum in Bali, Indonesia. Nigeria and Indonesia are like two sides of the same coin with decades of friendly business relationships. Indonesia African Forum is another opportunity for Nigeria to boost its networking for economic growth and create more jobs. Nigeria is open for business. Uh, President Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu has been very consistent in that. He has said that all investors are welcome to Nigeria. We are putting uh, a presidential enabling business environment council to help businesses uh, outside Nigeria to come and uh, flourish in our country. Nigeria more than ever before is, uh, is ready for businesses. Uh, unlike before, uh, you don't have fear that uh, your money or so your capital could be trapped into the country. Once you come, you do a businesses, provided it is within our legal uh, procedures. Uh, whatever profit you make, you take out. So we encourage everyone, uh, not just Indonesians, all investors around the world to come to Nigeria. The president's delegation assured that the current administration remains resolute to promote even business opportunities by would-be investors in Nigeria. This is part of the reason why we are here, to deepen that uh, collaboration, to deepen that understanding. Uh, so that there will be a reciprocal uh, business relationship between Nigeria and Indonesia. Uh, Nigerian businesses are expected to also come here. And like I said earlier, over 50 businesses of uh, Indonesians are already operating in Nigeria. Want to see that reciprocated here. Want to see Nigerian businesses come here. At the end of the day, Nigeria and uh, Indonesia will all be better for it. In addition to the main event, Mohamed Idris assured that Nigeria's investment potential will equally feature prominently through bilateral engagement with relevant investors. In Bali, Indonesia, Saliu Guanara, NTA News. From the judiciary sin, the Central Bank of Nigeria has prayed the Federal High Court to order Binance Holdings Limited to provide further clarification on the documents it is requesting from the Apex Bank to pursue its defense. Binance Holdings is facing trial for alleged money laundering and tax evasion to the tune of $35 million. The cryptocurrency company is one of the several, several designated non-financial institutions fingered by the EFCC as being complicit in manipulating the financial system through money laundering. Head of Financial Crime Compliance Tigran Gambaran had been in correctional custody over the allegations. He is seeking to be granted bail, citing ill health as reason for the motion. The martyr is adjourned to September 4, 2024. And on to security matters, the Nigeria Police Force has activated the Interpol tools and other global policing networks to support ongoing domestic investigations aimed at locating and apprehending a foreign national plotting to undermine the democratically elected government in Nigeria through unconstitutional regime change and orchestration, or rather orchestrating violence across the country during the nationwide protest. At a media briefing in Abuja, the force assures that it will spare no effort in bringing to justice any individual or group threatening national security and the governance process. He mobilized and deployed several billions of Naira to his Nigerian collaborators, urging them to mobilize the public to violently storm police facilities and military barracks, anticipating a bloodbath that would instigate international condemnation of the Nigerian government. These acts are in clear violation of the terrorism 
Prevention Act of 2011 and other relevant laws of this country. Extended to NLC, the force says it was strictly to some individuals within the NLC leadership to get details of the relationship between the foreign national that the force is investigating and the labor union, as a suspect owns a business center within the NLC building. Similarly, the force is seeking the support and cooperation of Nigerians with information that will lead to the arrest of the suspects at large. In a related development, the Federal High Court, Abuja, has fixed 11th September 2024 for ruling on the bail application filed by 10 protesters against their continued remand in police custody. The 10 defendants in the matter were arraigned by the police for their alleged involvement in conspiracy, treasonable felony, incitement against public peace and destruction of public property. Opposing a motion filed by defense counsel for their bail, based on re presumption of innocence, Prosecution Counsel Simon Law, SAN, said grievous allegations had been made against them and there were no exceptional circumstances to warrant bail at this time. The military has reacted to a video depicting alleged killing of several civilians and buried in a mass grave in Sokoto State. Director, Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba, in a statement says, the incident was not in Nigeria, but rather a nearby African country faced with terrorism. He noted that the terrorists, in an act of desperation, tried to manipulate the situation to mislead members of the public. The armed forces states that at no time were 150 persons abducted in Gubir and Sokoto state, noting that the rumored abduction was deliberately created to undermine troops' efforts and cover up terrorists' weakness. The military urged Nigerians to be mindful of the antics of the terrorists propagating misinformation and fake news as part of their war propaganda effort. Stakeholders in the security sector are advocating more use of non-kinetic approach in the ongoing effort to tackle insecurity in the country. The recommendation was made at the non-kinetic coordination course to re-evaluate the significance of non-kinetic approach to security and counter-terrorism operations. The armed forces of Nigeria is employing non-kinetic capabilities such as the Operation Safe Corridor, Information and Space Management Organization and Nationwide Defense Secure Communication Network to wage irregular warfare across the country. The National Security Strategy has uh, underscored the significance of uh, the application of non-kinetic, but then people need to know what it is and how it's applied and the value of uh, the application of non-kinetic uh, approach. Our own is to create a convivial environment for such activity to take place where security agencies in, in, in general are able to understand where civilians are coming from and through that we can have harmony you know in accomplishing the tax of peace. Of course an initiative of the National Institute of Policy and Strategic Studies and Peace Building Development Council would, among other issues, profile solutions to the contemporary issues that impact the armed forces and other security agencies. Federal government has charged suspected illegal miners arrested in Kogi and Ondo states during a recent operation led by the mining marshals to court. The operation took place in Angkwa local government area, Kogi State, resulting in the arrest of two Chinese nationals and a Nigerian for mining activities in violation of existing mining regulations. Also, the mining marshals raided an illegal gold mining site in Odigbo, local government area of Ondo State, where four suspects were arrested. These individuals caught in the act of illegally mining gold in a government reserved area confessed during interrogations that they lacked the necessary licenses to carry out their operations. The suspects from both Kogi and Ondo states have since been charged to court for, that's the Federal High Court, 
in Abuja. And let's look at what's happening in the housing sector. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will soon flag off the development of 1,500 units renewed Hope City and Kanu. Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Musa Dengiwa, who disclosed this during an assessment visit, however expressed displeasure over the slow pace of work at the site of the ongoing project in the city. Let's hear from Abdullahi Mustafa. Clearance work for the construction of road infrastructure at the site of the renewed Hope City project in Kanu. Two months into the flag off of the project, 104 units are at various stages of construction. Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Ahmed Musad Njiwa, is on ground to assess what the contractor is doing. They are supposed to start doing at least 500 houses. By now, we expect them at least all the foundation should be out. But uh, they have done almost 50% of the foundation and the work is not uh, moving as expected. When we started work now, it's the, the... While blaming TV problems for the slow pace, the contractor assured that the five-month completion deadline still stands. Five kilometers away in Ungwarimi, road and electricity infrastructure have been provided at the site of the renewed Hope City Project 2. Under a public-private partnership, 1,500 housing units are expected to be built. In the next two weeks, the minister disclosed President Bola Metunubu will be in Kano to flag off the project. While the construction on this already prepared site is ongoing, the infrastructure for the remaining sites will continue. This project is sitting over 100 hectares of land that we want to create a city within the Kano city. The renewed Hope Cities and Estate Program aims to provide 50,000 housing units in Phase 1 and is expected to create jobs and boost economic development in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. All right, let's head to, to get latest development from that end as we join Hengino. Thank you, Ruth. Foreign and local entrepreneurs have been urged to invest in Nigeria by taking advantage of abundant human and natural resources in the country. This came to fore at a forum in Lagos aimed at showcasing business-friendly opportunities in the country to investors. Bola Jiakim completes the story. Of over 200 million people, Nigeria is endowed with enormous natural and human resources waiting to be explored. The country is one of the largest economies in Africa and pivotal in the global landscape. These and many other opportunities that are bound for investors were presented at this forum. While calling on investors to take advantage of huge potentials in Lagos, Governor Babajide Sonwulu assured that his administration will collaborate with those willing to partner the government in infrastructure development of the state. We're building the largest logistics food security hub in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa. We see and we realize that we need to feed the over 20 million population that we have. And we say to ourselves that one of the ways to secure the tomorrow is to make sure that food security, which is one of the major security challenges that we have in the world, Lagos can build a logistics hub that can keep almost 90 to 120 days of supply. With federal government introduction of various incentives to boost investment in marine and blue economy, the minister said more business opportunities is now open for investors in the sector, as this has also positioned Africa as a critical player in the global economy. The federal government is actively encouraging investment in capital-intensive ventures, such as in the expansion of the domestic shipping fleet and private sector-led maritime development zones. The forum provides unique opportunity to explore new avenues for investment and strengthen the trade ties between Nigeria and our foreign allies. In Lagos, Bolaji Akim, NTA News. Building collapse has remained a recurring decimal as the incidents continue to claim the lives of innocent citizens in various parts of the country. 
One of the areas the Lagos State Government is exploring to ensure buildings and infrastructure stand the test of time is building materials testing. Musa Toliat in this report takes a look at the viability of materials testing to check incidents of building collapse in Lagos. Incessant building collapse incidents in various parts of the metropolis have continued to put emergency responders on their toes. No thanks to those who cut corners in the built industry to the detriment of innocent residents. Search and rescue operations can quickly give way to recovery activities. Enforcement on distressed buildings have done little to check sharp practices among property developers. But Lagos State Government is set to promote materials testing to stem the tide of building collapse. Soil test report should actually be the first thing anybody who wants to construct should do. Go run a test on the land where you want to build. The kind of soil you have in area A will be different from just maybe 10 meters away. Another 5 meters you could have another soil um, type. And people don't understand. So when you ask that this is necessary, you should do this. They believe that you want to waste their time. You want them to spend money. There is need to strengthen interagency collaboration to effectively enforce materials testing in the state. There are laws in Lagos states to stamp out unprofessional conducts, but sensitization on materials testing in a built industry is key. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. That's it from Lagos. Nationwide will continue after. Welcome back. All right, let's bring you latest updates on Nigeria's participation at uh, the High Level Forum on Multi Stakeholders Partnership and the second Indonesia African Forum taking place in Bali, Indonesia. Salihu Gwanara reports that Minister of Information and National Orientation represented President Bola Ametinubu. Let's see that. President Joko Widodo of the Republic of Indonesia received the African leaders in Bali, the commercial center of Indonesia. For the president, who has barely a month in office, the Indonesian African Forum with a commitment to addressing common global challenges of economic shutdown, unemployment, inflation, and regional political tensions. This is another platform to reawakening the 69-year vision of the Asian African Conference. As a giant in the African continent, President Bola Tinubu, who is the chairman of ECOWAS, in a message updated the forum about his efforts in championing initiatives to boost regional trade, enhance infrastructure, and promoting political stability across West Africa. Uh, there is no country that is an island unto, in, unto itself. Nigeria is not an exception. Uh, we are also forging partnership with all countries around the world, especially uh, with the Asian countries, uh, Indonesia particularly. Uh, we are coming here to bring the experiences of Nigeria what we are going through in terms of our economic prosperity, in terms of the challenges that we also face. And we are also taking the experience of other nations, especially Indonesia here, to see us to also uh, grow economically, but also to provide peace and security for the entire world. Uh, like President Bola Metinubu has always said consistently, Nigeria is open for business. Nigeria is also an important partner uh, in the global affairs and therefore uh, as a leading African country, Nigeria will always take its place to ensure that our country remains prosperous. With only six years left until 2030 and uh, only 17% of sustainable development goals achieved, the forum deliberated on a new direction and strategy to make sustainable development goals achievement the main focus of global and regional development priorities, including the African Agenda 2063. Nigeria is a leading uh, country in Africa, and therefore, uh, whatever we do towards uh, Agenda 2063, Nigeria will play a key role in, in agriculture, in mining, uh, in digital technology, and all other sectors that will ensure that Nigeria uh, becomes uh, a bigger and more prosperous nation, just as Africa also uh, would. The forum featured bilateral engagements in Bali, Indonesia, Salio Guanara, NTA News. 
And turning our attention back home, we head straight to Meduguri to find out what's happening there. Well, let's join Abu Bakr for latest news. It's always good to see you, actually, Ruth. And thank you for joining us. The city of Meduguri came to life when Guinness World Record holder and World Chess Champion Tunde Onakoya, founder of Chess in Slums, Africa, visited the city for a chess training and sensitization campaign organized by the Nigeria Air Force Officers Mess Nafom Chess Club. The event was aimed to transform lives through the power of chess. Paul Kujivana reports on the remarkable impact of this initiative. Tunde Onokoya's arrival was met with excitement and warmth as children, Nigerian Air Force personnel, and chase enthusiasts welcomed him. His message was clear integrate chase into school curricula to reduce out of school children. Commander 105 Composite Group, Nigerian Air Force, who is also the patron of the chess club, Air Commando Caleb Olayera, praised Onokoya's initiative and the visit, assuring him of safety. We are blessed to have you here because the the club actually has a vision of touching lives and making the society better. The chess training and sensitization campaign kicked off at Muna and Shuari IDP camps, where Onokoya shared his experience in the world of chess. It's been one of the best experiences of my life, you know. It's just, I think, and I've said this a couple of times, we must always reject the single story about any people or any place. The campaign continues at the NAFOM officer's mess, which Onokoya engages school children, reiterating chess's transformative power. I feel like a champion playing with the chess master. We had always wanted to come to the north. What can we really do? How can we really bring the, a new kind of attention, you know, to these children in this place? Not one that demeans them, but one that actually dignifies them. As Onokoya departed, he promised to return, leaving behind a legacy of intellectual empowerment and a chase revolution in Borno State. In Meduguri, Paul Nkujevana, NTA News. Let's look at other issues now. 1,247 youths that qualified for from the states of Borno, Adamawa and Yobi have been posted to Police College Meduguri for training into the Nigerian Police Force. The report. The posting of these 1,247 youths followed the approval of President Bola Ahmed Tinibu towards addressing manpower deficit within the Nigerian Police Force. Organized by the Police Service Commission and the Nigerian Police Force, the training is expected to last for six months towards making the youths qualify as constables after being equipped with the requisite skills to operate maximally in dealing with contemporary security threats. One million persons applied for the position of constable across Nigeria, where only 10,000 of them qualified for screening, out of which 1,247 persons were posted to Borno. Out of about one million of them that applied, and only few of them that are selected, I think indeed it is uh, an opportunity for them not to miss. So I advise them as a father to take their studies seriously and every activity of the college seriously. Successful persons shall be deployed to their local government areas within the affected states towards effective community policing in line with the mandate of the Nigerian Police Force. Management of the Borno State Police College acknowledged the Borno State Government's tremendous support to the institution, especially the recent renovation of some structures within the college. And those are the latest stories for now from Meduguri. Ruth in Abuja has more for us. Thank you very much, Abu Bakr. The World Meteorological Organization says Africa is facing a heavy toll from climate change with many countries spending up to 9% of their budgets on mitigation. In the weather report released this Monday, the WMO states that Africa's temperatures have risen more rapidly than the global average, despite producing far lower greenhouse gas emissions than other continents. The report reveals that the continent is losing on average 2% to 5% of GDP in response to deadly heat waves, heavy rain, floods and prolonged droughts. It further estimates that sub-Saharan Africa will need to spend 30 to 50 billion dollars per year over the next decade 
to manage climate change. The World Meteorological Organization therefore urges countries to invest in the state meteorological and hydrological services and to speed up the implementation of early warning systems to save lives. Disaster risk reduction is considered one of the major strategies which if mainstreamed and downscaled to all parts of the country would greatly reduce casualties recorded yearly occasioned by disaster. And this is one of the resolutions by experts at a three-day workshop on early warning for all draft for country DRR situational analysis report that's for 2023 to 2030 and 2024 to 2027 action plan. Elias Yakubo reports. Disaster risk reduction and early warning is an integrated system of hazard monitoring, forecasting and prediction, disaster risk assessment, communication, as well as preparedness and processes which enables individuals take timely action of hazardous event. This workshop organized by the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in collaboration with World Meteorological Organization and United Nations Development Program for Save Resilience Project is key to addressing the ugly trend. It is on record that the current escalation of disaster events in form of conflicts, banditry, and annual floods, coupled with extreme weather events have triggered the compelling desire to develop the DRR strategy and action plan for Nigeria. And early warning is only effective if it reaches all those at risk. If we use data, the problem of disaster risk is almost, almost, almost solved. The United Nations General Assembly introduced disaster risk reduction in 2015 with the sole aim of reducing hazards of disasters across the world. In Abuja, Ilias Yakubu. NTA News. Plateau State Government says its decision to provide potable water to both urban and rural communities of the state is to reverse the trend of water scarcity and long suffering of the people. This was when management of Just Water Services Corporation conducted vulnerability assessment visit to Tudumwada community in Just South local government area of the state. In the young Adiaba reports. Water is one of the basic necessities of life. It is in realization of this that Plateau government accords priority to the provision of water to citizens. Government is, however, worried over water scarcity in communities, particularly in rocky terrains. One of such communities is Angwan Clinic to Dumwada D, a suburb in just not local government area of Plateau State grappling with the challenge of perennial water shortage for more than 30 years. This stream serves as the only source of water for the community, which only flows during the rainy season, as the rocky nature of the area does not allow for digging of wells and boreholes. All what they do, if they get one jar comfort to cook food at home, that is home. So. Our men have to join us to help us in running uh, with their vehicles to go and fetch water from a far distance. The community complained to the State Water Services Corporation and the management is here to assess the situation with a view to addressing its plight. Together with the neighboring uh, community, that's the Ikukumu community, they are already captured and there will be uh, extension and replacement of pipe that will serve them. About eight kilometers. He calls on the public to protect water facilities for efficient services in Jos, in Denyan, and the Abajang, NT News. And to gender matters, Gender Advancement International Initiative is partnering the Ministry of Women Affairs and other strategic agencies in setting an agenda for female gender and all the social development issues through inclusive reporting. This came to the fore during a media appraisal on gender mainstreaming, issues surrounding persons with disabilities and common health challenges affecting women. To achieve this objective, the agency and MacArthur Foundation is playing a critical role in the implementation of the mandate through storylines that project issues and solutions. We believe that bringing a JC perspective to our work, bring to the table 
the voices of people who are usually forgotten in our society. The conversation is not where it should be yet, and that's why the media itself needs to make these an agenda to ensuring that the government prioritizes gender issues. The launch of the Story From Me website for persons with disability to tell the stories from a place of accountability rather than charity. The Minister of Women Affairs also spoke on interventions and urged for accountability and annual auditing to measure performance and results of gender-related supports through the ministry. The billions of dollars coming in here, what are they being used for? Can it make an impact? That is why we have to focus on the new narratives. Being able to tailor interventions that suit the needs of whatever population you might be addressing their challenges. Commitment is to form a common front in containing gender-related crimes and giving voice to the voiceless through empowerment of journalists to promote the mandate of the organization. Sons and daughters of Moro local government area of Kwara State, both at home and the diaspora, have resolved to intensify efforts through actionable plans towards achieving rapid development in all the communities within the councils. This decision was arrived at during the maiden summit of Moro Indigents held at Bode Sadu, headquarters of the local government area. Ahmed Fulani reports is here presented. Moro local government area was created in 1976 with its headquarters in Bode Sadu. In spite of being one of the oldest local councils in the state, one would have expected it to be one of the most developed local governments in terms of health facilities, road infrastructure, educational development, and other indices of development. This maiden summit of Moro Descendant Development Union, MODU, that had representatives of all the wars that make up the local government on seat, was to chart a new way forward with more action plans rather than talks without results. The convener of the summit, Isaka Inde, is worried about the level of underdevelopment within the Axis, saying that the indigents have allowed themselves to be systematically manipulated and reduced to inferior citizens compared to other parts of the state. Our educational facilities are in shambles. Visit our schools, dilapidated structures, classrooms without chairs. And we are created in 1976, up to today, 76 that I have not any or witnessed any uh, better developmental program. The essence is to preach you know, the gospel Hello. of unity and everything that will make Moro to progress. The summit had in attendance elder statesmen, district heads, youth leaders, representatives of women drawn from all the 17 wards of the local government. Right. After a bountiful harvest, one of whom feels a profound sense of accomplishment and gratitude. It is a mixed feeling of relief and joy, knowing that the hard work and patience have yielded a rewarding outcome, right? And a deep connection to the rhythm of nature's abundance. Now, this was the atmosphere at the All Saints Military Protestant Church, Mogadishu Cantonment Annual Juvenile Harvest and Thanksgiving Service. Olaji de Bello. Capture the moment for us. It is definitely not May 27, which is the internationally recognized Children's Day. But this particular day is to celebrate children as they take center stage, displaying their mastery in scriptures, motivational speeches, inspirational songs, and choreography. Nicole, 11, wants to be a chef, while Praise, 12, wants to be a doctor. They've been taking me to church, I've been learning, been reading all night, and they push me away from bad friends. They, they teach me how to be a good girl, and they buy books for me and things. Mommy has been helping me, teaching me how to crawl from baby to, to kid. The chairman, Harvest Committee, and other parents, bear their minds on parental and religious roles in child upbringing. The theme of this year's harvest is supernatural healing. We are praying for healing for the land. We are praying for healing for the church. 
and we are praying for healing for individuals. It is our hope, it is our prayers that each and every one of the kids be blessed supernaturally. The only thing that can help a child go through the crisis of the present generation which the Bible spoke about in the end times, it is Christ. Give them the message of Christ as the Savior. We're thanking our wives who are also around to help mold the children. But I must tell you the truth, it wasn't easy bringing them up while in service. It is our responsibility to train them in the way of the Lord. The healing grace of God rests upon them so that they will become the light, the future, the hope of the country. Cutting of past cake, special prayers and thanksgiving climaxed the event on large day below NTA News. Still on religious affairs, the Sultan of Sokoto and President General Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Muhammad Sa'ad Bubakar, has urged Muslims in Nigeria to start looking for new moon of Rabiu Awal 1446 after Hidra by tomorrow, 3rd September 2024. A statement signed by Chairman Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council, Sakoto, Professor Sambo Wali Junaidu says, tomorrow is 29th, Safar 1446 after Hijra. It therefore urged Muslims to start looking for the new crescent of Rabiu Awal 1446 after Hijra that will be for Tuesday, 3rd September 2024 and report the sighting of the new moon to the nearest district or village head for communication to the Sultan. Ibadan is our next stop and Kemi is all set to guide us from her end. Both and welcome to Ibadan. The Nigeria Customs Service has vowed to intensify efforts at eradicating dangerous drugs that pose a threat to the well-being of the nation. Controller Oyo Oshun Command, Dr. Ben Oramalugu, stated this during a media briefing at the Customs Command Headquarters, Ibadan. Lukman Hassan tells us more. Area Controller of the Oyo Oshun Ibadan. Command, Dr. Ben Oramalugu, Ibadan explained that the command was able to rake in over 30 billion naira into the Federation account between the month of June to August 23, 2024. Dr. Orama Lugo noted that the command has also arrested one of the largest consignment of India hemp at about 2,020 kilograms, about 148 million naira. We discovered that crime in the society, there is a leakage between humongous crime that we have in society and those drugs, no the same person will go and kill another human being if they are not on drugs. Other items seized by the area command include 40,915 liters of PMS, 2,183 bags of foreign no, pervoid rice, used tires, and second-hand no, clothing. The area command has handed over the seized India hem to the NDLEA for onward destruction. We hand it over to the, the exhibit officer in charge. In due time, we will, be, we will now go for exhibit bomb, where it will be destroyed precisely. The area controller, Oyo Ocean Command, appealed to Nigerians to desist from engaging in trades that are injurious to the economy of Nigeria. In Ibadan, Lokman Hassan, NTA News. Talking education, Ilori West local government has emerged winner of this year's junior secondary school quiz competition organized by the Kwara State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBEB. All the 16 local government councils in the state participated in the keenly contested quiz with winners getting cash rewards and other prizes. Abdul Hafiz Alaya's report is here presented. Competition, which began some months ago, had representatives from public junior secondary schools from across the state slugging it out in different fields of knowledge. Ilori West and Ilori South local governments made it to the final and once again proved their dexterity in English language, mathematics, basic science, social studies and general knowledge. At the end of the breathtaking competition, students from Ilori West emerged winner with 80 points and went home with 500,000 cash reward, while Ilori South, who garnered a total of 60 points, received 400,000 naira. We strive hard because from the beginning, not an easy work, but we thank God that we, uh, we emerged the winner of this competition. It was a little tough, though, but we succeeded. We are targeting the future. We have trained them based on what they will get.
from international competitions as well. To the Kwara Subeb, the sterling performance of Kwara students at both local and international quiz and debate competitions is a reflection of Governor Abdurrahman Abrazak's huge investment in basic education, which is making Kwara public schools a toast of all. Kwarans, Nigerians should now realize that basic education in the state is going up, up, and up. So we should try and encourage and enroll our children at the public schools. The quiz grand finale also featured presentation of certificates from the Federal Ministry of Education to quarter students that represented Nigeria at the World School Debate Championship in Singapore and recognition of stakeholders in quarter basic education sector. From Ibadan, we'll bring you more reports. So you could join us in Makudi. 20 women in Bermuda State have received a check of 50,000 Naira each as recapitalization grant courtesy of the Renewed Hope Initiative and Economic Empowerment for 1,000 women petty traders. Symbiat Agbaji reports that a total of over, over 1.8 billion Naira is to be disbursed to 37,000 women petty traders across the nation to assist them to recapitalize and grow their businesses. Recently, Nigeria's First Lady, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, was in Makudi, the Benue State's capital, for the distribution of food items to vulnerable groups in the state and promised that 1,000 women from each state and the FCT would get 50,000 Naira each as recapitalization grant from the Renewed Hope Initiative and Economic Empowerment Program. It is in fulfillment of this promise that the Renewed Hope Initiative is back in Makudi to perform the symbolic presentation of checks to 20 women petty traders to boost their businesses. Beneficiaries who expressed their gratitude said this could not have come at a better time. I'm here to thank the, um, the wife of the president for this great opportunity because it's a blessing to me. All thanks today for what they have contributed to us to support our business. We promise that we will make them proud. Founder Renewed Hope Initiative, Senator Oluremi Tinibu, represented by the Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Welfare, Anna Itoda, said it was part of the First Lady's commitment to drive economic growth towards a better life for their families. Economic empowerment remains a core objective of Renewed Hope Initiative, and we have consistently delivered on promise to both women and youth across six geographical zones. Deputy Governor Sam Odi stated that the gesture holds great benefits. He assured Benway women that the present administration will continue to support women, urging them to take the grant as a sign of their commitment to prosper women. We still have bigger plans for women in agriculture and also in trade and other sectors. Other women petty traders are to receive the 50,000 Naira grant subsequently. In Makudi, Simbiat Agbaji. NTA News. The Namnai Bridge along Jalingo Wukari Road that links Taraba State with Southeast States has collapsed following a downpour. A delegation of Taraba State government that inspected the collapsed bridge appealed for government's intervention. Ado Adamu. Business was unusual to commuters plying Jalingo Wukari Road and that of Jalingo Bali Road due to the collapse of the Namnai and Mayokam bridges after the downpour in Taraba State. This has caused untold hardship to commuters, which compelled the Taraba State government to send a delegation led by the deputy governor to assess the situation. We are going to put this together to ensure that this bridge is repaired in the shortest possible time, so that the people lying the bridge will not find it difficult. In doing that. Uh, the level of damage seen now is really apparent. It is when the water subsided, and then we are seeing the beams and the, and the piers that total, and then we see what is underneath, even if it's the pile and the pile caps, so that then we can actually determine what is really went on. Meanwhile, an engine boat with a sizable capacity of conveying vehicles and goods has been provided by the member representing Bali Gasol Federal Constituency in the National Assembly, Jafaru Yakubu Chiroma, to ease 
the commuters' challenges. In response, Honorable Jafar Yakubu Chiroma providing an engine boat as a relief to assist our fellow citizens in crossing a river free of charge. Jalingo Wukari Road is strategically important for the movement of farm produce to the southern part of the country. In Jalingo, Adua de Mualso, NTA News. And that's our package from Makudi. It's back to Ruth in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you very much, Susan. Nigeria needs to concentrate more on the protection of her history through proper documentation. This was part of submissions at a book presentation titled Against All Odds, My Testimony by Inyak No Oso, editor-in-chief of the Biographical Legacy and Research Foundation, a first online biographical information database in Nigeria, Olusheye Adiago reports. Iyakno Uso, the man who initiated and operates the first presidential library in Africa, the only presidential library in Nigeria's 63 years history, says for over five decades he has been committed to preserving Nigeria's history through libraries, media researches, documentaries, and biographies. At this lecture titled Breaking Barriers, Bibliotherapeutic impact of biographical legacy on national reading culture, mental health, and national development. Scholars, including former president Olushegun Basanjo, appreciate the efforts of these septuagenarian in preserving resources on Nigeria's history. Okay. I'm 70. I, 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 I have decided that henceforth I'm going to train, I'm going to open up my space for seminars, for workshops, for conferences, for talks you know, on information management and knowledge management for young Nigerians. Inyakno, a pastor with the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, has also contributed to the spread of the gospel of Christ. Despite his age, he says, he is on course to sustain the humanitarian job. In Abuja, Olushaye Adiagbo, in Tsinims. And it's time to go home, right? That's nationwide. Thank you very much for your company. I'm Ruth Aguele. Bye.